This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and we have an Audiotronics Stereo Classroom record player. This is a solid state four speed model from 1978. It's in decent cosmetic shape. It's not all marked up like most of these are. It uses a couple of 6x9 speakers, and we have controls for volume, bass, treble, balance, play, and pause. We also have a mono and stereo switch, which I like because when playing some old mono records, especially old 78s and 45s, playing them back in mono will cut some of the noise. Uh, I wouldn't even really be bothering doing a video on this because for the most part this is going to be just another record player overhaul, but there's uh, something I need to mention on here, and it'll, it'll answer a question that I see a lot of people asking. Since this is a stereo model, this uses the Astatic 13T plug-in PowerPoint cartridge. Uh, that cartridge was a very popular cartridge starting in the late 50s and was probably used up until the early 80s mainly in institutional record players, but in the earlier days of its, of its existence it was used in a lot of uh, consumer grade record players. I know Motorola used it a good bit. Physically the cartridge looks just like an 89T, which is the standard mono PowerPoint cartridge that the school record players use, but being stereo it has four terminals instead of two. Well, in their day that was a convenient uh, cartridge because you could just unplug it and plug in a new one when needed. Well, I don't know when they stopped making them, but I'd say by the mid-80s they'd pretty much stopped making these, and I know Califone switched from the 13Ts to, to using Tetrad cartridges when the 13Ts fell out of favor. Well, a uh, question I often see is what do I replace my 13T with? Well, let's break it down. I looked on eBay for new old stock Astatic 13T cartridges and there were, there were only two listed. One of them was $47.95, the other one was $39.99 and on the Voice of Music website they are totally out of stock on their 13Ts, and the the last price listed was $35, which is way too much money, in my opinion, for something that when the needle fails, you're going to have to uh, replace it again. And also, another issue with 13Ts, as they get old, the rubber suspension gets hard, and they don't track right and don't sound well, so you know it wouldn't be too good to pay... $39.99 or $47.95 for a cartridge only to have it show up and it not be in decent shape. So, what do we do to replace this? Well, here's what I use. I use a Fansteel P228D that's available from the VM website. This is a knockoff of a Varco TN8U cartridge, very popular stereo cartridge starting in the late 60s and continuing on up. Uh, you'll need to know some soldering skills in order to replace this, but it's basically just a simple matter of taking the two screws out that hold the existing cartridge holder in place, unsoldering the wires to the existing cartridge holder, soldering your new wires to the cartridge clips that are provided with the cartridge, and plugging up the connectors onto the terminal of the new cartridge and mounting it to the tone arm. So it's really no big deal. And then you'll need a tracking force gauge to check your uh, tracking pressure. I usually like to track these cartridges at about 4 grams. The tracking pressure for the original 13T is listed at 7 grams, so already this is an improvement. 4 grams versus 7. And Looking at our output voltage, the 13T has an output of 0.65 volts. The P228 has an output of 0.8 volts. Volts, so this cartridge is slightly higher in output, so we shouldn't have to worry about any issues like what we have to deal with the Mono 89Ts, where the 
output is 1.3 volts and installing a cartridge with lower output and having to modify the amp, we shouldn't have to do that on this. As far as checking your tracking pressure, we have a spring here and if the tracking pressure is too high we can adjust this spring. Now some of these metal or static tone arms have a have notches in the tone arm where you can place the spring in whichever notch gives you the correct uh, tracking pressure but unfortunately this one doesn't appear to be that way so if the tracking pressure is too much I'm just going to have to carefully remove links of the spring until I get it down to what it needs to be it's a tedious task but you know it has to be done and give you a good look at the holder here that the original cartridge mounts in there it is and here's what's left of the old 13T cartridge as you can see it's pretty well torn up and like I said physically it looks just like an 89T but we have four connectors we have two on the bottom and then one on each side of the cartridge here and as you can see this is held in with two screws we simply loosen the two screws actually I like to take one screw completely out and just loosen the other screw enough to slip the holder out from under it. Here's our cartridge holder. Red is right plus, blue is left plus, and then we have our two shield wires that will need to be unsoldered. Okay, here's our new mounting bracket installed. You want to make sure the bracket is installed straight, the screws are securely tight, and that you had the bracket situated the right way. The little clip part goes towards the front of the tone arm and this part back here where the little hole is that goes towards the back we have our holder unsoldered generally all you have to do is touch the terminals with a hot soldering iron and the wires will just fall off and one of the other advantages of using the upgraded cartridge is when you flip from LP to 78 you're flipping the stylus not the whole cartridge on this type of deal that you see here you're flipping the whole cartridge holder and that can stress your uh, wire leads out which will, can result in the wires breaking off from the terminals. I've fixed numbers of these school record players where the wires were broken off from the cartridge terminals from flipping them back and forth. Now this cartridge comes with four solder on cartridge clips as well as some jumper wires for using the cartridge for in a mono record player. We won't be using these jumper wires today so we'll just save them for a future project. All we'll be using are these cartridge clips and when preparing these clips to solder to it's, it's helpful if you have an old dud cartridge that you can slide the clips over to kind of keep them stable while soldering the wire to it and it also helps prevent solder from filling up into the cartridge clip don't never do this with your uh, new cartridge because heat from the soldering iron could ruin the cartridge. Okay, there's number one soldered and we'll just repeat the process for the uh, other three. Okay, we have our connectors soldered. Now it's time to push the connectors over the proper cartridge lead. Right is on my left. The left channel is on the right. The two pins closest together are your common ground. The two wide pins are your uh, hot leads. Now be careful because sometimes it can be a pain to shove those uh, pins, connectors, over these cartridge pins. Okay, we have the cartridge installed. Let's set it to 45 RPM. And, <laughs> and we can tell that's not turning nearly fast enough. So yeah, this is going to need a full drive mechanism overhaul. But we have sound from both speakers. So.
that's enough of that. And we can tell that the lubricant on the spindle bearing has turned to powder. I'd be willing to bet this thing has had zero maintenance over its 40 year lifespan. And our tracking pressure is coming in at 10.4 grams, which is way too high. And when you do this, you want to try to check it in the with the tone arm in the approximate position that it's going to be in when playing a record. So you can see I have my gauge elevated, sitting on top of some old records to get everything aligned right. This cartridge has a recommended tracking pressure of 4 to 8 grams. I usually try to track them somewhere around the 4 gram end, and that way it'll be more gentle on records, but 10 grams is certainly too much. And as I said before, this spring doesn't have an adjustment. Unlike some of, this ver some of these types of tone arms, I wish it did, but it doesn't, so I'm just going to have to unclip the spring and just start removing links until I get the tracking pressure where it needs to be, and yes, that is a time-consuming trial and error process. Well, I got a little bit too carried away, and now we're tracking at 3.6 grams. That'll probably be okay. I hope it is, because if it's not, then I'm going to have to add a little bit of weight to the head of the tone arm to get it up a little bit, since I've taken so much off of the spring. The thing about removing links from a spring to lessen the weight, you can always remove more links, but uh, you can't add links to it should you cut too many off. Okay, we have the drive mechanism all cleaned and lubricated, replaced the motor mounts, and treated our idler wheel with rubber renew, took the motor apart, cleaned it and lubricated it, and all this is turning freely now. So I think we'll put the platter back on, uh, connect some speakers and see what it sounds like. And yes, I did clean the pots too. If everything works well, we'll screw it all back in the screw it all back together. It's amazing what a little platter bearing clean and lubrication can accomplish. Notice no more uh, jerky movement from the platter now, and it spins down a lot better too. Of course, the speed selector is in neutral. Yeah, that sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Here we are with a 78. And of course, you really can't tell it on the camera since it's mono, but this stereo mono switch does make a big difference in cutting surface noise. Okay, about all that's left to do is probably going to have to replace that spring with something else, and I have a spring assortment because this is a little light. Thought I might could get by with 3.6 grams, but it's a little bit too touchy. So we'll deal with that later. I'm not going to waste video time with that. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory what I'm going to do. But the main thing I wanted to demonstrate in this video is how to go about replacing a 13T cartridge, which is now obsolete and much harder to find than the Mono 89T equivalent. And the 89Ts are getting hard enough to find, so, so I've pretty much accomplished what I wanted to in this video. So with that said, hope you got something out of all this and more to come later.